Hi, welcome to my channel. I am Abhishek. In the last video, we have created a REST API using Spring Boot. We have performed the CRUD operation. And we have seen how we are creating a resource, uh, how we are deleting, how we are updating. So as a next step, uh, we need to see uh, whether those API is raising an exception or not. If it is raising an exception, uh, those we need to handle this. So this that is what we are going to do in this video. So let's see. Uh, we have a couple of routes like uh, uh, the find one, delete, create and all those things. So first uh, we will see this find one route when we hit with the uh, id1 as a path variable we are returning as an object if i open in the database you see inside the database we have one id as a one with the object now the next step if we mention id as a 10 just a random it is returning some uh, kind of exception with uh, 500 internal server error if you go to the log by open write the run you see it's raising an exception saying student service at this line it is saying that it's getting an exception so due to the exception um, spring would have a default behavior it's uh, giving as a 500 internal server error so this is the one exception we need to handle and another exception like uh, uh, if we handle some we give some random route it's giving a correct kind of correct message i can say it's giving a 404 status not found and error it's not found we can customize this also at at further extent uh, we can write our custom message here so this is that is what we are going to do in this video so first we will start with this route and then we will handle uh, this uh, like uh, if you uh, give any random route we need to handle those also so let's get started so first and foremost thing i just want to let you know that there are a couple of ways uh, to handle exception inside the spring boot uh, like uh, using controller advice and many other methods are there so in this video i am going to explain using controller advice so for that uh, for that you need to create a class as a as a global class and there you need to define a couple of methods and those methods will be responsible for handling the exception of your application basically it is a global place to handle the exception so let's see uh, at this point we saw right it's raising an exception so we can handle from here so there is a method called all else throw so we can throw exception from here like if we got an exception then here we will uh, see we are getting a runtime exception null pointer exception but we are interested more interested in uh, defining our own exception so for that uh, we will define as student not found and here we will give a message like student not found with id and give a space and just mention the id right now this class doesn't exist let's create this create a class student not found and i'm going to keep inside the exception package which is not present so if I hit OK, it will create this class and this package. So let's hit this. You see, in our um, there is one exception package is created. Right now it is extending with uh, the generic time. Let me take it take it as runtime runtime exception, and this as should be replaced with the message and just call the super method with message right so from here if this line uh, like uh, if id doesn't found then 
it will run this method and this method will throw an exception it will go to here so up to here so far good as i mentioned earlier we need to define a global class with controller advice that will be responsible for handling an exception so let's declare that let me create a class call app exception handler you can come up with the good name as well but i for now i am going to stick with that and when you are uh, dealing with the uh, controller advice method you need to extend this uh, you need to basically create a subclass of uh, response entity exception handler which is the base class for handling exception if you go to this class this class says convenient base class for uh, centralized exception handling mechanism it gives you can go through this class and in this class you can see these are the exception it's uh, basically handles all the methods are already present just we are going to override few and uh, that's it we are good to uh, with, with that so first thing uh, you need to annotate this class with controller advice why controller advice like uh, uh, while component scanning spring would come to know that this is the class for handling an exception so for now we are more interested in handling this is exception right so for that you declare your own method call public and i'm interested in to return as response entity as object type now handle to then not found so here i will give student not found exception and i will take as a web request as a parameter so when you are dealing with this like you are defining your own exception you need to define your uh, exception handler as a notation you need to provide the class name i am going to give as a class so basically uh, let me uh, give you the idea also so from here if any exception raise it will go here in this class and it will go this message to runtime exception and then it will go up to here so basically this exception handler um, you are basically uh, working with student not found so this method will get executed now it requires an response entity as a object type um, so for that i will create a a, a, a class uh, which will we will eventually we will return as a bean of 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 this class let me keep as api error and this will be the generic class let me define some properties here private basically we are going to override this uh, this method you see so now i will take first field as private string message next i will be interested in http status status and then i will take as a timestamp field local date time and i will name as timestamp right and here i need data as a lamb walk annotation to generate getter setter method and all our constructor i need right now from here we will just return new response entity and new api error the first thing it will take as a message which will will give exception dot get message and next it needs an http status to so http status not found the next will give a local date time dot now and we are good why it is oh okay so next we need to define the
the status code also http status dot not found and right so let's test this now i will stop and rerun okay so first i will give uh, uh, the id which is present yeah it's returning the response now if we give uh, id is 10 you see this time we are good getting a proper 404 and message the timestamp basically in this format uh, we are getting the response now and this 404 is coming from this the last part this is for the http status code and this http status for displaying in our response body so you saw that how easily we have configured by test with 100 you see we are getting a proper message also earlier we are just getting internal server error which is kind of misleading also that is not an internal server error right so we have customized uh, this one now next we are more interested in uh, like let's say if i give and for this there is no handler and it is quite saying uh, accurate only the 404 not font is giving the quite good but if i take this and open in browser it is white level error and i just want to override this this also so how you can do that so for that also it is quite easy if i go here and if i just come down i saw some method there uh, no handler something no okay we'll see here or just uh, override the method call no handler yeah this one so why we are overriding this method let me give a background so basically here the find one if I take any random so basically for this URL there is no handler basically there is no controller exist in our case so it will route back to the default exceptional mechanism which is Spring Boot provides so we want to alter that we want to alter that behavior basically if there is no handler present we want to uh, customize those things so that's why uh, we have over, override the method call handler no handler no handler handle no handle found exception right okay yeah, my bad so we, we are interested in it in this and uh, we will make use of and we will return that exception we will be doing this okay perfect not found date time no get message right so now there is uh, uh, the expressed x step like let me rerun and i will i'll tell you what i mean here even though we have a, a handler present basically we are handling in our way but it it will still route back to the default behavior only so for that uh, we need to customize little uh, a further level more let's see let's see for this we had we don't have a handler but still uh, it is going to the uh, default exceptional handling mechanism also but here we have defined our own way of returning the response basically we are handling this so for that you need to customize little bit further so just 
open resource and go to application dot properties and for that here we need to tell the spring boot that if there is no handler exception we need to override that also for that you take this two property and paste it here basically it says like if throw exception if no handler found that is true and the mapping basically uh, default value is true we are mapping uh, basically we are disabling the mapping so that in that case it will come to this method now save and restart i hope this time it should work and guys you can uh, customize further also you can uh, define on your bean in your way you can uh, define your more properties here which is suited to your application so let's try now i am just mention the random string you see our uh, uh, handler is working let now let if i take this to browser earlier we are getting some see we are getting a proper message now if i give see if i give random so we are able to handle uh, those behavior also so this is what we have learned like how we have handled the exception using uh, controller advice in our application so if you have any doubts uh, please let me know in the comment section i will try to address those so in the next video we will learn how we can create a, a documentation for this application